All right, so we're uh, we're in the news. Yes, we are. I'm right. on the internet now. <laughs> Finally, I'm to back to Windows, but uh oh, what happened? With, what happened with Linux? It's my fault. End user error. I End would user say. error. Okay. Uh, so you have some news. What do you want to talk about? Okay. Well, you know, recently I told you about the website Encyclopedia Dramatica dot com. You did. Okay. Tell, tell our viewers about it. What uh, what is it? It's pretty much for noobs on the internet. If you what, don't know what a noob is, what is a noob? You may want to go to this website and check it out. You just type in. It's much like Wikipedia. So you just go in. It's a wiki type website, and you ask a question, type something in. You might type in noob. They'll give you an internet based definition. Now, of it. now, how about a definition of wiki? <sighs> I don't know. You want to find out? No, I can. Let's just quickly explain that a wiki is a uh, owner supplied or an end user supplied answer that can be modified and edited and things like that. It's not written by anyone specifically. Um, mm -hmm. Wikipedia, for example, uh, is a good example, uh, or some others. Uh, but you're allowed to go right on those sites. Uh, you log in, and, and then you can make your own changes. You can actually edit it, and uh, hopefully your edits will, will stay put. So I guess that'd be a good explanation of a wiki. Yes, yes. It's uh, like an encyclopedia made by everyday people. I like it. Open source encyclopedia. We're talking a lot about open source. Open source software, operating systems, open source uh, office packages, um, open source uh, colas. And just recently, I, I've read something in the news about an open source car. I don't know where that is. I'll try to find that. An open source car. Open source car. Supposedly, um, you, can, you can change and, and make modifications to the design as long as you share it with the rest of the community. So uh, I'll have to get back to you on that one. That's actually, I just read that a couple of days ago. So that was pretty interesting. Um, I recently read that uh, Stephen Hawking, the uh, physicist, is uh, taking a ride on the vomit comet. Ooh, you know, that's that 727. It's a 727 that uh, a lot of the astronauts practice in. They go up and they do these uh, parabolic arcs to make the plane uh, simulate zero G. Mm -hmm. So uh, Stephen Hawking is going to uh, is going to go up and uh, ride in that. I actually uh, got a letter from him, an email mm -hmm. years ago. I, I sent an email to Stephen Hawking about my uh, show car, which recently sold. Um, yeah, he's a Star Trek fan. He was actually he, yes, he, 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 he actually yes, he's actually on an episode of Star Trek, and uh, I wrote to him about the Star Trek car. Uh, he thought it was very very cool, um, and and that was the end. That, that's it. So okay. I actually had some correspondence with Stephen Hawking. Um, 102 year old man takes out a 25 year mortgage. Wow. Uh, I haven't even read that. That's the that's the title there. Uh, not really interested in, in, <laughs> in how that applies to computers. Maybe there was a complete computer glitch. Um, oh, this is interesting. Okay, this actually applies. This applies to some of our, some of our end users here. Um, we've been talking a lot about wireless security. Uh, a lot of people that have wireless networks don't uh, encrypt or don't use their, uh, their web keys or secure their wireless networks in any way. And uh, this is rather interesting. This says, uh, don't use WEP for Wi-Fi security. Of course, uh, using nothing at all is probably the worst. Um, and so this is recommending not to use WEP for Wi-Fi security. Now, most Android users should know you have alternatives to WEP, like WPA. So far, WPA is the strongest of the encryptions. But WEP, really honestly, with this CD right here, I could crack WEP in less than five minutes. Nice. Doesn't matter, this laptop made to crack web. Made it's nothing in, but web cracking. Nothing but web cracking. Yeah, that's what it does. Okay, well that's very cool. Um, all right, well if you have any questions about uh, whether or not your wireless uh, access point, your wireless router is secure, uh, we certainly want you to contact us. Make sure that you contact us and uh, we'll come out. We can, uh, we can check to make sure that you have some sort of security on your wireless device. I think that's probably a good idea. Definitely. You yeah. definitely want to change some things on your, on your wireless device. For example, if your SSID is Linksys. <laughs> Pretty much you can be assured that if yeah. you're leaving it as Linksys, then the, uh, the username and password is admin and admin. So yeah, that's, we're definitely uh, going to hack that. Yeah. <laughs> not us personally. Maybe. I would never do anything like that. No, that, we don't condone that. But <laughs> somebody might, and they might look a lot like us. I don't know. <laughs> might be carrying some laptops, too. It wouldn't be us, though. Not us. OK, kind of interesting. This is actually um, from, from PopSci.com. It's Popular Science's website. You know, we love Popular Science here. We do a lot of uh, reference to them. We talk about uh, our, our Ask a Geek questions. They're actually taken sometimes right from Popular Science. So I, I like them a lot. Yeah. Um, this is interesting. Uh, the memory hacker, this is called, Ted Berger has spent the last decade engineering a brain implant that can recreate thoughts. 
The chip could remedy everything from Alzheimer's to absent-mindedness and reduce memory loss to nothing more than a computer glitch. Uh, here we go. Back to, uh, this, this is one of my favorite topics, uh, the Geek Squad. Uh, uh, of course, let's, let me start off by saying we, you know who the Geek Squad is. Um, those, well, what does the Geek Squad do? Well, those, first of all, they drive around in little VW Beetles, uh, black and white painted Beetles with the big Geek Squad logo on them, and they claim to fix computers. So they're kind of like us, but... I not, think we could, cool. we could be the, the bully squad, maybe, then? The bully squad. I like that. That's, okay. that's very... <laughs> All right, that's you know, because we drive around in nice big trucks. <laughs> that is true. We do have a cool vehicle. Uh -huh. All right, so uh, here, let, let's get right to it. Uh, the Geek Squad charges $415 to replace a hard drive. <sighs> That's yeah, outrageous. take a breath on that one. Charges four hundred fifty dollars to replace a hard drive. Makes customers retrieve data files himself. This is taken right from the Consumerist.com. Uh, I actually read this a couple of weeks ago. I was looking for an opportunity to uh, to get it here on the news, it is. and I just want to just want to read some of these uh, excerpts here. Uh, this fellow uh, brought his uh, laptop to the Geek Squad, and they told him that the price to diagnose it was sixty nine dollars. That's reasonable. Uh, that's, that's reasonable. The OS uh, installed is $129, and the backup transfer be $99 and no guarantee. Let me also uh, just start off by saying uh, that uh, the customer's laptop stopped working, so he consulted the oft-advertised but rarely recommended Best Buy Geek Squad uh, for assistance. They told him the problem was called Blue Screen of Death. I'm familiar with that. All right, well, we're from, old school. Yeah, but. we're familiar with that. It could be a variety of things, but that's what they told. Him. Anyhow, so uh, they gave him these prices, and seven days later, they hadn't even looked at the machine. After eight days, they begun testing the laptop, and on the tenth day, through exhaustive tests, were still being done. Um, weren't able to get this fellow's uh, laptop back to him. So that seems like a long period of time. I mean, that uh, sounds like something that we would probably be able to handle in just a day or two. So uh, if you're interested, um, you have the option, uh, certainly. You could, you could uh, have the Geek Squad come and do service for you. Uh, however, it appears as though they take a considerable amount of time. Um, so let's see here. Uh, the data was really beyond saving. Mm, it's unlikely uh, that the, uh, the data was beyond saving, which brings me to another point, something else that I, that I found. Uh, which is also with regard to the Geek Squad. Well, hold on, let me well, point it out. Well, okay. if, it, if it had a blue screen of death, then the uh, hard drive was operational. The hard drive would be operational at that point, yeah. So it's it's you possible. Could get and, and, and more than likely, we could do a data recovery on it. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the things that I've been reading, which is, which is a little disturbing, um, is that there's not great uh, tech support from what I found out. It says, uh, here's, here's one that came also from the consumers, had a very similar experience. Uh, right down to the wiped hard drive. Actually, what happened is they, uh, they wiped the hard drive without, uh, without checking that first. They should actually have a test hard drive, which is what we use, uh, put a test drive in to make sure that there's, there's no problem with the hardware. And that way, the, the customers, your software, uh, your operating system, doesn't get uh, damaged in any way. We actually put it off on the side and put our own hard drive in for the purpose of control testing, which is probably a better way. That's definitely, the, I think, the ideal way of doing it. I, I think that uh, our viewers would feel the same way.